Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. This is the Wix online meeting number 79, beginning of September. It's like all cloudy and rainy here in Seattle, which is fantastic. Everybody's all happy. As always, these meetings are recorded for those people that aren't able to be with us right here, right now, but we have a great quorum. So I'm going to go ahead and roll into the agenda. What are we doing? We're doing triage. Why are we doing triage? Because we're trying to ship Wix 3.10 RTM. Uh, we have a dream of when that will ship, and I think in the course of discussing triage, we will make a decision on it once again. And then, of course, as always, we will open the floor for questions, comments, things like that. So without further ado, triage. Bob, you ready? I think I am. All right. Um, documentation bug down here, I think, starting us off. Um, listing this when it should read that. Hmm. To get ice to be quiet. Hmm. All right. Uh, seems reasonable. I don't know where to put it. Four X. I don't know where should we put it. Uh, that's a fine question. Um, I think we could actually we could probably put it in three X and just make sure it's assigned. Put it in three eleven. That we won't lose it. Put it in three X yeah. and it'll disappear forever. Well, hopefully not forever. Well, for a while. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, I, sorry, I, I'm I'm a little reluctant to put it in 311 just because I hate putting stuff in if we don't assign it. But how about if I just assign it to me, therefore it's assigned and everyone's happy. All right. Preprocessor should support case insensitive inequality. Uh, okay. I suppose. We want to have even more. Really? Tilda? Not me. What? Oh. This is your bug. What is this? Uh -huh. um, the, we, we have case insensitive equality. You know, tilde equal, but we don't have inequality. And yes, you could always string them together, but MSI supports tilde in pretty much everyone. Okay. So MSI has something. Oh, really? Is it like tilde angle angle? Yes. Okay. Which, of course, is different from the Fine. preprocessor, but I, I sure. Meh. <laughs> like, yeah, okay, whatever. Could be done. But yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Ability to run helper applications from burn. Standard have the hap ability. I hope that's just ability, and it's not like a word I don't know. I don't think so. All right. Well, so ability twice. Would have something to do with houses, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have a, maybe. I'm, I'm hoping it's just like a consistent typo. Uh, cannot Outlook plugin that they need to do. All right. So they have to do something complicated. Phil, Phil's got the answer down there. It, we already support this with BA functions. It's just oh. not nicely wrapped with. Uh, um, you know, like nicely wrapped with directly supporting running XEs and I don't know what, get the exit code and do something magic with that. I think BA functions do the BA trick. BA functions is probably the answer. All right, cool, yes, I agree. BA functions, awesome. Well, Heath, there's a problem with... Uh, um, it's a problem when you have... when you don't know your exact target it's easy to write code around some of those things that... If you yeah. hit a situation where you can't do the standard stuff, then yes, that would be good to have that. Um, but we already kind of provide that escape hatch, so... Right. The PA function, I think, is the right answer for that. Yes, this would tag instance with the moved on bundle major upgrade. Yeah, this is a problem that the bundle doesn't reference count the SWID tag, and even it, it this is a... If you, if you install the same SWID tag name for two different bundles, they can overwrite themselves. I mean, typically for a major upgrade, if you install the different folders, that's not a problem. If you install the same location, you need to do something um, from build to build upgrades. If you put the build number in there, it's okay. It's one of these things I think that we need to go back and look. But this is what the spec currently has, so I'm 
can find so that. So the ID we're using is the bundle upgrade code, is that correct? It's not the ID, it's the file name. So when you install, if the new bundle, so you have bundle v1 and bundle v2, when bundle v1 puts down the bundle, you know, puts the SWID tag in A, and bundle v2 puts down the SWID tag in A, when you install v2, it writes A, correctly overrides it, but then it uninstalls bundle v1, which then takes A away. It's the same right. name, exactly the same. So what goes into the name? Today, just the bundle name and that. You can override it by giving the SWID tag a name. If you put oh. them in different paths, oh, I see. if There's you saw like V1 and V2 to different paths, the correct thing will happen as well, um, and so on and so forth. So there's some there's some debate in the spec of the um, that you know we should look at putting the version number in there or something. So anyway, it's something I think we can update later if we want to. Right now, you can override it by giving it a name if this is a problem for you. So I guess what I'm saying is I don't think we should take this for 3.10. I think we should open it in like 4 or 3x or 4x or something and basically say, let's see if we can do something even smarter so you can avoid this problem. That's where I'm getting to. Do you think this is something that could not be done in 3x? No, it probably could be done in 3x. It could be done in 3x. Okay. Mm -hmm. We may change the name of your SWID tag on you. So that might make it more of a 4x thing. Let's put it in 4x then. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Uh, incorrect code for remove shortcut, for remove folder shortcut. Is this different? Oh, no, this is the same, except it has more information. Oh, I see. Jacob, that's not what the spec says to use for the bundle, so... Anyway, uh, let's dupe this bug to the other one. And you can just use the registry key. Remove registry. You don't need remove registry. And use the remove registry I over. Yeah, it depends on how you put your shortcut. But yeah. So I think the previous doc is enough for us to basically say, let's go fix the example and anything else around it to make sure that it's all good. I don't think we need the two bugs. Do you? I agree with that. All right, cool. Yeah, that's fine. And roots. I'll take a look at uh, what's happening in there. So root certificate install fails. So I, I, I took a peek at this and through all the history and everything. And if you go through the history, it looks like there is an enum that was suggested that somewhere in all of the changing of the code, that enum has not been made it has not made it into the code. Um, well, I went looking and I didn't find any bugs with this with this error in it. Yeah, not yeah. I've seen threads. Yes, I've seen threads, but no bugs. And inconclusive threads at that. And, and, and no they're bugs. all inconclusive. So I think this, I think there certainly could be something here for this. And it's probably the, the good thing to do is go try that other enum, which is if it does what they say it does in these threads, is named very, very poorly. I mean, it basically says use certificate, and the enum we're using is replace certificate because we want to replace it, not use the existing one. Right. But everybody seems to be suggesting that the use actually does replace it with the newest one. I'm like, really? Anyway, so testing needs to be done for this. Someone needs to go do this, test it, verify that it actually does work correctly, and everybody's happy. And then I think we could, yeah, then this book could finally be fixed. Now that's finally open. <laughs> well, yeah. So, so I'm. I, I would like to, you know prompt the user here to provide you know, sample and and logs so we have... I'm fine with that and this can go in 3x and they can bring it to 311 if they someone wants to go do that work. Right, right. I think we want the we want the data since this is apparently the first time the bug's been opened. Yes, as far as I know. I, I won't look at I mean, I won't look on SourceForge. It made me sad, but... <laughs> All right. Burn packages crash with status illegal instruction on old hardware. This one had me all kinds of scared. And then Bob slowly convinced me, walked me off the ledge, that this hardware is ancient and that this was Visual Studio 2012, which means it was at least in three, what did we decide, six? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Which then makes me far less concerned about taking this bug in 3.10, and I think we should toss it 3.11. 
Yeah, it, it, it's an easy fix, but, man, you're talking about code gen. I don't want to make that change no, at this point in the cycle. Right and if it's been this way for 3.6, he's not going to be dying for it. We should I mean, we should do it. We'll do it in 3.11, just not 3.6. Yep. yep, I agree with that. I really like saying 3.11. It's kind of fun. I'm still waiting for 3.14. 3 3.14, <laughs> yes, there you go. You're going to say it that way the whole time? No, I will okay. call it Wix Pie. <laughs> Uh, are we going to have to skip the 14 just so you can get it? Um, anyway, maybe. Maybe. I don't know if we're going to make it that far. We're definitely skipping 13, right? <laughs> I know. No, <laughs> we have to. Because <laughs> everyone else skips it because they're... Well, never mind. You know, my, my son even, it's really funny. He can count... I don't know, if you get him going, if you help him with the transitions, he can even count like to 100 if you let him go. But it's, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14. And I am working on him to hit 13. I'm like... I don't know if I spent too long at Microsoft and it affected him or what. It's just cannot count 13. Um, I, I, I feel that, the whole concept of Microsoft affecting your genetics is kind of concerning. I, I just feel I feel bad like I'm failing him. So anyway, if this is true, we should totally take this. How about we toss it 311 and give it to Blair? Uh, no, I got a better idea. Let's toss it 311 and give it to Mike. because he'll be actually the one that'll be able to tell us whether it's a crash or not for doing such a thing. Good point. I don't think it'll crash. It just really Well, is. if it's not supposed to be released, he will be able to tell us that. Yeah, all right, cool. So 3.11, though. We're not going to take it in 3.10. No, right? I agree. Yeah, so. Small minor leak. That hopefully doesn't happen very often. Ah, uh, this bug. Mass assignment. So X64, if you install your SWID tag to an X64 location in an MSI, you will get an ICE error. Because ICE errors um, have to be, uh, have, the components have to mark 64-bit to install the 64-bit location. It's like, oh. And I thought we covered this test case, but then we realized that the, the Wix X64 MSI doesn't install files to a 64-bit location, installs them to a 32-bit location, but it writes 64-bit registry keys. Uh, so. Anyway, uh, and we're creating a component from the and SWID behind tag. the scenes. The SWID tag, yeah, is creating an element for you. So it needs to provide the ability to set 64 bits. So it does with this PR that we pulled out. Once we narrowed it down, uh, we found. Uh, oh yes, okay. So if you you can now specify 64 bit, and it will default to the appropriate thing that the platform is set to during the compiler, which is what it should be. And then the newest 64 is just an override should you need to use it, which you actually do have to for the Wix X64 MSI because it installs to a 32 bit location. Because <laughs> the only thing in there is a registry value and some MS build stuff, right? Yeah, something like that. So anyway, it cleans it all up and makes it better. Um, so anyway, so the debate here, and I'm going to recruit myself from it, is uh, taking this in 310 and what it does then to 310. Um, well, I think we have to take it. Yeah, probably, since we took the SWID tag thing. We could go to before the SWID tag release to the build before that and take the SWID tag out. Um, this is 100% isolated to the SWID tag code, so... Um, there's no change to burn at this point, which seems to have been working for everybody. So if you don't use SWID tags, you don't see this at all, so we don't have that impact everywhere. All those kinds of things. Oh, yeah, there is no change to burn. Okay. Oh, and another thing that was found while we were doing this, someone on the mailing list hasn't opened a bug on it yet because they're being very helpful in trying to get us data. Uh, but bind paths, bind values in version numbers were also failing. Um, and so there's a fix in there to handle that case as well. So I added a note when I went reviewing, and this doesn't actually make the bind time variables work. It just doesn't crash. Is so that the correct? Well, yeah. So it so the fix it turns out um, is that when you it they do work in the end because the way that the code works, and this is something we want to change, but we didn't want to do the structural change now, so we'll do it later. Is that it actually generates the tag once so that the uh, Wix toolset MSI will have the appropriate file size, and then it turns around and generates the tag a second time that then so the MSI gets the file hash. It's this really complicated, weird thing given the way that these were kind of wedged into the Wix toolset without making any breaking changes anywhere. 
And so we would like and to do this better in Wix 4. <laughs> so but the it, second time, the bind time variable has been resolved. Exactly. And, this, and sorry, to finish the story, the second time through, the bind time variable is resolved, not the first time through. So it turns out bind time variables do work. We did work other places to make sure the bind time variables would work in the file names and everything like that, because they didn't work in the, those places either in the previous SWITAG implementation. So we fixed a bunch of bugs around that, and this was the last one that uh, we missed because we didn't think about the fact that it's compiled twice. So the fix yeah. is to just ignore the version failure and then do it again. So in this case, ignoring it actually solves the problem. <laughs> Turns out, if you ignore it for a little while, it'll come back and get it right the second time through. Uh, as in life. Um, yeah, I looked at the change. Um, I, I had my question about that, and as long as they're overwritten there, I had one other question, but you know, the, the changes are, as you said, isolated and minor, and in this case, necessary, so uh, yeah, I think we should take this for the 310. All right, so I'd like to suppose that we do a build this afternoon, mm -hmm. not a full release, and we give the the uh, the the link to the people that are directly affected by it. The be like basically Phil and I don't remember the other person's name that was helping with the other issue. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fine. I, I don't think this is a big enough change to, you know, spin an RC3. Right. And, and if we did an RC3, then I would be proven prophetic in suggesting that RC2 was the last one. Right. So, yeah, I think that'd be fine. I think we can count on Phil and I think David is the other guy's name. Yeah, that sounds right. To uh, to to take a quick peek. Okay, so you want me to do a, a full bore release and have a new build-up show up on the releases page, or do we want to just give them the direct links to the individual storage behind the scene? I'm inclined no, to go through the whole process. Yeah, yeah, let's okay. just do that. Anybody that wants fine. to pick up this build. Other so, people want to look yeah. at it. So, so John... <laughs> Mr. I pick up almost every build, I think. Um, that would be fine. I'll build it. That's right. <laughs> All right. Uh, the bug that just slipped in. Add support for detecting VS 2015. No, VS 15. Sorry, VS 15. Oh, I was going to say, didn't we already do this? VS yeah. 15. Okay. <laughs> That's what I said, too. Uh, I thought yeah. it was from Heath, and then I was going to yell at Heath, but no. Okay. It be Dev 15. Sure. Sounds great. You want to put it in 3.11? I assume it will be done before then. Depends on when we ship 3.11. Well, so, I mean, they, they're going to know the keys soon enough, right? I would assume. All right. 3.11? I, I don't know, so. Hey, it has an owner. Let's toss it 3.11. If he doesn't want to do it there, then he can move it. Heath? That'll okay. Work. Okay. Well, if it's not in 3.11, we don't have a release for you, so. <sighs> Given the fact that very soon we're going to have a conversation about never having another Wix release ever, so Bob doesn't get his pie. Um, no pie for Bob. <laughs> it's going to turn into a logo. No pie for Bob. Um, or I'm just going to declare that the next release of Wix is 3.14. Oh, no 3.11. Very good. Yeah, but 3.11, yeah. I, I keep... It rolls off the tongue. That band. Well, I mean, they pick we right can say we're just getting a head start on skipping 3.13. Yeah, there we go. We got a running start and jumped right. over cheers that we are. All right. Before we get ahead of ourselves, uh, 310, um, we're going to do a build. We're going to push out to these people. Hopefully, they'll look at it quickly, that kind of stuff. Um, Labor Day or no? Uh, uh, if we get basically a week response? from yesterday. Yes, from yesterday, yeah. So less than a week away. Um, uh, gives me hives, but that's okay. Um, I think as long as we get you know feedback quickly, and I think we can – you know, pretty pretty well rely on that. Uh, I, They've been I'm, responsive so far, so ex exactly. Um, I you know, I, and obviously, as long as the news is positive, um, I think uh, we can still we can still pull off Labor Day. All right, cool. So we'll have a party next um, Tuesday if all goes well. Will there be beer? Yeah, you can bring it. <laughs> there will be beer. All right. <laughs> Uh, I'm off beer right now, but yeah, sure. Uh, all right, so 
Does anybody object? Anybody out there want to say, no, 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 we definitely should not make it for Labor Day. Like, there's something that they know. Sean, Jacob? John? Yeah, see, look at that. John's so fast. Maybe it's just that he types fast. Or he writes short answers. I still like Labor Day. All right, cool. So the people that have contributed the most code are all kind of like, yeah. Actually, Heath, you contributed blocks, I think, right? In this one? Three of ten? Yeah. Labor Day still good? Oh, did Heath just walk away from keyboard? Sure. All right, cool. All right. All the major people. All right. So, anything else? Anything else we want to talk about today? Stuff happening. App Compat. App Compat. Yes, App Compat. About something else. Making it even harder to do App Compat? Oh, lovely. Like versioning? Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, it's all the version lying. So how do you how do you tell the right version? You have to manifest it every time? Constantly? I think I'd even keep doing that. Well, I mean, they could, but... I'm not exactly sure every time I have to rev it because Windows 10 is the last Windows, right? Dun dun dun. Good plan. Um, check for features they need regardless of Windows 10. Well, okay, I'm fine with that. That was the same know. answer I got when I was describing how I needed the real version number um, based on, say, redistributing a certain OS component like .NET Framework. Same thing. Like, well, I understand that's the model for those only app developers, but... Okay, I, I'm... Needs to write custom... Well, I, I don't know. How do you detect features in in Windows? Like, I've never seen the spec that says, here's how you detect features. I well, and it's it's more than that. It's like, you know, you have to check... I hope it's not DISM. Like, is that what they're it, talking about? No, no, no. It, oh. it's, it's not that feature so much as as, you know, being able to detect functionality, like when it was introduced in Windows, but that's just not how people think about it. Um, but I think, you know, they're, they're, the, uh, the other thing to look at is, you know, can we do more of the, you know, is Windows X or greater? Yeah. Uh, so, Windows I'm not, like, seemed to tolerate that. You know, and, and Heath is like, you know, maybe we can do more with WMI, and I'm, I'm not against adding WMI detection, necessarily. Um, uh, but I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I guess I I don't know what it means to detect the features you need. Like, does that mean, however, the feature of Windows says it can exist, detect it? Okay. I, mean, I guess we're gonna have to burn that bridge as we go. Uh, so burn probably. Did we get, we did get the manifest right? We got the manifest changes for threshold, which was Windows yeah. 10. So. Um, so, yeah, I guess I'll be curious to know what else we're supposed to do with it. It's like, cool. So hopefully we're not being lied to because we said we're, we understand that. Um, and I don't know what else you do if the operating system is going to say, here's not, here's the version and we'll have to deal with that. Features and roles. That's a very server thing, typically, but... If we need to go make it easier to detect those, then we should make it easier to detect those. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, we should make it, I mean, I think it'd be great if Burn made it easier to detect and configure all those server role stuff, but that's just work to do. But I think it's, you know, when it comes down to version detection, it, it really, it's not so much that. It's not so much the, uh, um, you know, is this is this feature installed? It's and again, there. Why do you detect versions? Because you have, you know, different things for different versions of OSs. Well, now you have to figure out. Or you don't support how, OS anymore. I mean, that's a favorite one too. Well, yeah, that yeah. Most right. of that should be easy. Yeah, you're like, cool, I, I only support Windows 7 and better because I don't want to bother testing on Vista. I don't have any features that I need in Windows 7 that are different than Vista. I just don't want to bother testing half the functionality on Vista, so I just put the block and say Windows 7 and better. What feature am I searching for? Windows 7. <laughs> so. This is probably
probably going to be, you know, we're going to have to be reactive based on what they start to do. Yeah, like I don't like we're you know I'm talking about here is server features. I'm like, yeah, those are features, but that's not as far as I know. Last I saw, Windows does not define itself as a bunch of those features. It's just one of the many things. I okay. I guess that's a heads up that version numbers may become less useful in the future and detecting anything functionality is going to be a mess unless Windows comes up with something more useful than a mess. Cool. All right. Very good. I guess we could add something to documentation that says, be aware, at this point on, the version number, version NT, may be lying. We can put that in the doc, I guess. Yes. And now everyone starts to look at NT DLL, that DLL, and say, oh, yeah, that was Windows 8.1. Yeah. I suppose that's the answer, right? People start doing other hacky ways of detecting stuff instead of the one way that there used to be. Hey, it's called great. Fi fighting a losing battle. You can change the battlefield, but yeah. Well, it'll be that. worse if they don't say what the correct way to detect things is. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, how do I do the right thing? Well, we haven't defined a right way. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> well, I'm just well, going to go warm up Red Jab it there and, and figure it out. To deal with it. <laughs> I'm happy to follow guidance but if there's no guidance, I don't have any answers. So it's like, yeah. cool. No, well, they hate version numbers. They don't want to expose them. So I'm not surprised that they're going out of the way to lie to you. Yeah, I don't know how to think about that problem, but it's a very important engineering issue. So. <sighs> Mary. Uh, anyway, so we will deal with versioning detection of features and such as it comes down the pipe. I don't know how to do much more proactively at this point. Although it would be cool if we had WMI for support. Totally be cool with that. It would be cool if we had the ability to turn on server roles and all that for server. That would be great. Features and roles, whatever. All that kind of stuff. Those would all be completely reasonable things. Wouldn't surprise me if we already have feature requests open in Wix 3X somewhere for them. Or 4, for that matter. Yep. So all that would be grand. Um, anything else? Other things going on? All right, cool. So we're going to go get this puppy shipped, come back, and then we're going to be more free to celebrate next week and then think about what the future holds. Yes? Works for me. All right. All right. All right. So until next week, I think we're going to call it, I think, half-hour meeting, a little bit less since we started a little bit late. It's awesome. Uh, until next week, when we've shipped this thing and everybody's happy, uh, you guys keep taking it easy. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.